1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 through 17. Let me start off by reading verses 5 and 6. What after all is Apollos and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe. As the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed. Apollos watered it. But God has been making it grow. Amen. On this 11th anniversary. If we can all say it is the Lord who had made this church grow. Amen. It is not one person. It is not two people. It is the power of God's word. It is often said. Churchless Christianity would lead to Christless eternity. I'm sure all of you must have heard that. Churchless Christianity would lead to Christless eternity. There are many people these days who have run away from the church. The concept of church itself is absent. I mean, the concept of coming together like this. There are people who go into YouTube, watch a sermon on Sunday and make themselves comfortable. Yeah, I am part of this church. I listen to it. No parking issue. There is no problem of offering. I am part of a church. But people have said that kind of a tendency without the community would lead to Christless eternity. Now on this 11th anniversary, when I look at this 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 5 following, I want to bring to you three important principles that will help us in our walk with the Lord. And especially as church, when we move forward, you please keep these three things in your mind. First of all, when I look at this chapter 3 verses 5 and 6, here is this agricultural metaphor used by Paul to talk about church. This metaphor is used elsewhere also. In the Paul's letter to Timothy also, he uses we are like farmers who are supposed to do hard work. Amen. This metaphor is also used in John 15 to talk about wine and branches. We need to stay connected with the wine, which is Jesus himself. Now, when we look at this verse closely, there is a word which is repeated here. In verse 6, it says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. And even in verse 7 also, again, the word who makes things grow. The first thing that I want to bring to your attention is this. What is the mark of a true church from these verses? A true church would be word-centered. God's word should be our primary focus. When Paul said, I planted, I planted the seed. How did this planting happen? Planting happened with the word of God. In 1 Peter we read, 1 Peter 1.23, we are led into a new birth experience, not by testimony, not by any song, but by the imperishable seed, which is the word of God. All of us are here because at one point of our life, the word of God worked. The seed was sown into our heart Amen. and the seed sprout yes. and it is bearing fruit today. The if you take the word away, then rebirth will not happen. You remember Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus in John 3? Unless you are born of water and spirit, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. To enter the kingdom of heaven... Or to have the rebirth experience, the water stands for word of God. Amen. Word has to work in our heart with the spirit of God. When I think of that, I am so thankful to the Lord. Amen. Because thank you Lord for the word that was sown into my heart. Amen. And because of that I am standing before you today. All of us have enough reasons to thank the Lord today. Because we are brought into Christ himself because of the word of God. Paul is the one who planted the seed in the Corinthian city. He was sowing the seed of the gospel Amen. by preaching of the gospel. How was this preaching? In Galatians chapter 3 he says, 
His preaching was as though he was drawing the cross of Christ. That is the picture language used in Galatians 3. I have drawn Christ in front of you. Any preaching that is not centered around the cross, we have to recheck it. When Paul went to Corinth, he was drawing Jesus in front of them. And because of that word of God, the seed fell. And the Corinthian people accepted Jesus because of the word of God. And after Paul left the place, it reads there, Apollos watered it. What do you mean by that? The sowing seed is by the word of God. How do you water the seed? That is also by the word of God. Amen. I hope you are with me. If you take the word away, then there is no growth. The seed is sown. That is the word of God. And Apollos comes. He is watering the seed. That watering is also supposed to be the ministry of the word of God. But there is a big danger here. There are many people, many believers who have had that first experience of the new birth. If you look at chapter 3 and verse 2, the problem of the Corinthian believers is very strange. Chapter 3 verse 2, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. In other words, seed is sown. Seed stands for that milk. It, it is sown. You are drinking milk. But the next level. Next level is supposed to be watered. And you grow. Or you have the solid food. What is the solid food? That is also the word of God. Sometimes believers settle for something less. The preeminence of the word of God dies off after a period of time. My dear people of God, on this 11th anniversary, Amen. let me ask all of you, what is God's word's role in your life? Amen. Do you have the habit of meditating God's word Amen. on a daily basis? If we are deteriorating into a Sunday service, then we can never grow into the way which God expects from us. Yes. When I was meditating upon the Lord yesterday and this morning, this word was coming very powerfully in my heart to tell you. Tell these people who are celebrating the 11th anniversary. We need more of God's word to grow and become like Christ in the coming years. Don't be satisfied with what you have now. Don't settle for just the seed. Don't settle for just the milk. Today we must ask the Lord. Lord give me more of solid food. Lord, water me so that I can grow. That should be our prayer today. Water me, O oh God, with the word of God. Give me more of solid food so that I can grow. The Corinthian believers is error. If you look at chapter 2 and verse 6, look at chapter 2 verse 6. Paul is saying, we do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the among the mature. But do you know this Corinthian people. Did they achieve that state of maturity? No. When you look at chapter 3 and verse 1. Chapter 3 verse 1. Brothers and sisters. I could not address you as people who live by the spirit. But as people who are still worldly. Look at the word. Mere infants in Christ. They were supposed to be matured. Amen. Maturity comes with watering Amen. and that is by the ministry of God's word Amen. when I look at this church and look at the churches around in the city in one way I am happy because every Sunday you are listening to unadulterated word of God you are in a right place to grow but there are chances of you coming and seated being seated in the church and sleep is it possible Often time I tell people, don't take the pride that you're part of a church that teaches God's word. It is up to individuals. It is up to individuals how we allow God to shape our life by the word of God. If you look at this Corinthian people in chapter 1, look at chapter 1 
and verse 7, 1 verse 7. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift. And in verse 5 it says, For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge. They are enriched. They have big pastors like Paul and Apollos. No pastor of 21st century would match with the standard of Paul and Apollos. Even after being part of a church like Corinthian church, where they have been enriched with every spiritual gift. Have you seen a church like that? I have not seen. You walk into that church and you have all the spiritual gifts. Prophecy, healing, discernment, you name it, they have it. These days, we have specialist people. When a demon is manifested, you take the phone and call him, call him. If he comes, he can do it. For healing, you have another specialist. You call him. But look at this Corinthian church. They have everything in the church. And in chapter 12 and 14, you see about people who are in queue for prophesying. These days in churches, hardly we hear prophetic utterance. When an unbeliever comes into a church these days, they are feeling comfortable and they go back. But in Corinthian church, Paul said, prophets are there standing in queue. And when they prophesy, what will happen to this unbeliever? He will be convicted of his sin because the prophet will be able to say things which is not disclosed otherwise. That was the standard of this church. They are blessed with all spiritual gifts. They are enriched in the word of God. They are supposed to be matured, but they are infants. They were supposed to be craving for solid food, but they are drinking milk. It is in this context that Paul is saying, I planted the seed, word of God. Apollos watered it, word of God. God is the one who will make things grow when we allow ourselves to come under the ministry of God's word. It is my sincere prayer, my dear friends, that when we step over to the next year of this church's life, there will be a renewed interest to study God's word. There will be a renewed passion to study God's word. Some of our devotion and meditation life, it should change. From tomorrow onwards, start the day by solid meditation. Take time, separate yourself from the noise of this world to listen to the voice which comes from the God. And ask the Lord, Lord, I want to grow spiritually this year. You know, in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, when we look at the importance of the word of God, word is a seed, word is supposed to be that watering agent that would make things grow. In 4 verse 12 of Hebrews, I like something there which shows us the importance of God's word. Look at 4.12. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Sometimes we stop there. Stop there by saying a word is very powerful, double-edged sword. But it continues to say it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit only with the word of God we will be able to discern what is soulish what is spiritual there is soulless worship there is soulish worship you know what is soulish worship after the end of that worship session you feel good the song was catering to your appetite. It was coming from the mind. You were feeling good. But spiritual worship, you may not feel good. Sometimes you go out of the beat and something happens. But your spirit was communicating with the Lord. You know, you know there is a worship which end up in vain. Jesus told about a worship. You people, you are worshipping in vain. Empty worship. Why? Lips were there. Soul was energized. Your rationale, your mind was stimulated. 
but what did not happen was spirit was not touched when we study and meditate god's word it will penetrate and divide soul and spirit Amen. we will be able to discern Amen. this is spiritual Amen. this is soulish when somebody get up in the church to minister you will be able to discern this is soulish this is feeding my soul this is stimulating my flesh and you will be able to discern this is spiritual you know we have come to a time now in 21st century where churches preachers you need to discern preachers you need to discern preachings when in acts chapter 17 verse 11 it says people in berea they were of more noble character than of people in thessalonica you know why the berean people went back and search the scriptures to see to see what whether what paul said was true or not when we cross over to the next year this is my humble prayer and desire Amen. that all of you will be grown grown one step ahead in this coming year so that you will be able to discern what is maturity what is that solid milk solid food that will enable you to grow and become mature able to discern soulish and spiritual the second thing the second thing that i want to bring to your attention first thing is about growth growth only happens with word centered preaching may shelter house be known for word centered preaching Amen. that will produce mature believers Amen. may this church be known not just for feeding milk but for feeding solid food Amen. may this church be known for people who are able to discern soulish and spiritual Amen. that is the need of the 21st century that is the need of the city second paul is coming with an other metaphor after this agricultural metaphor he comes up with look at chapter 3 and verse 9 for we are co-workers in god's service you are god's field meaning the agricultural field we are only watering god is the one who makes things grow second metaphor comes god's building what is a true church true church is god's field where pastors will minister unadulterated word of god and see people grow number 1 second true church is god's building and the focus here is what is the focus of this building metaphor if you look at verse 11 you get the focus of that metaphor for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid which is Jesus Christ Amen. You know what is the focus of this metaphor If the first metaphor focus was word of God the second metaphor focus is Jesus Christ Amen. Jesus Christ is the foundation He is the cornerstone and in Peter's language we are all living stones put and constructed to become a building for god now here again a big danger is there there are many people many believers they have jesus as the cornerstone pastor 10 years back or 15 years back jesus christ is laid but they are building their christian life not with costly materials look at verse 12 if anyone builds that shows that there are chances to build if anyone builds on this foundation which foundation on jesus's foundation using gold silver costly stones three things that talks about durability that talks about costly material used and on other side wood hay or straw my dear people of god listen very carefully 
we all have started our spiritual life by having jesus as the foundation now we have to be very careful at one point five years back or 10 years back you have said i have said from this day onwards i belong to jesus foundation is laid now there is a chance two materials are offered to build your spiritual life to build a church a true church you can only build a true church with gold silver and stones which stands for the true jesus modeled discipleship but on other side there are churches where jesus is the foundation but building is happening with wood hay and straw meaning no discipleship happens it is just crowd it's a big burden in my heart and this morning i am telling you again from this this portion of the scripture which is like a need of a century anything that falls short of discipleship is not what god expects from us Amen. true discipleship will lead us to cross shaped lifestyle Amen. praise the lord it is not a matter of joy i have jesus as the foundation wait 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 you have jesus as the foundation what materials are you using to build the superstructure you and i must use materials that will stand fire fire will test the quality of the work on that day look at that verse verse 13 their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light it will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the test the what is the mark of a true church where quality is emphasized every sunday not quantity the boasting of the church is not how many people are added in the last year fire is not going to test the quantity fire will test the quality Amen. quality will happen when we use gold silver and stone to build the superstructure oh, yes. then fire when fire comes the judgment comes we will stand on that day may all the believers here shelter house people of god let me ask you today from the bottom of my heart are you building your life using costly materials amen is discipleship costing you something the question is not do you have the foundation of jesus foundation of jesus is there what is the material used to build up what happened to the corinthian believers why is paul saying all this paul is saying all this because just like seed was sown watering happened but maturity did not happen because believers did not submit themselves to the ministry of god's word just like that in the corinthian church jesus the foundation was laid but there were several people who were drawn into carnality yes. there are a couple of words that i want you to look at when you open the bible look at chapter 2 and verse 14 2 verse 14 yes. a the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of god but considers them foolishness there are many in the church you ask them what is your foundation they will say jesus you ask them when did you um, have that rebirth experience they will look at the date and say on uh, 4th august 2014 everything is clear foundation is clear the dates are clear but the problem is they are not able to discern spiritual things Amen. spiritual things when somebody say hey brother you need to pray more 
you need to use expensive materials to build your christian life it sounds foolishness for them there are many people like that in the church they are not able to discern what is spiritual the moment you lift spiritual things to them they will say this is foolishness this is foolishness a person without the spirit if that is the word used in 214 psychikos 3 1 it's another word brothers and sisters i could not address you as people who live by the spirit 214 is people without the spirit 3 1 is people who live by the spirit meaning they have some kind of experience of the spirit to make it plain and clear they may speak in other tongues 3 1 people may speak in other tongues but they will not be able to control their mother tongue. I hope you're getting it. Church, they come, they're excited. And the spirit filling and they speak in other tongues. But when somebody say, hey brother, your spirituality is not measured by speaking in tongues. The way you talk to your wife, that is the sign of your spirituality. That is foolishness. That is gold, silver. Where spirituality is translated into a house atmosphere. Where husband and wife are using costly materials to build up their spiritual life. Amen. 11 years, it's a good time to look back. But also it's a good time to look forward. Lord, I want to grow. I want to grow by the ministry of God's word. I want to grow by using expensive materials. When you apply for a job, let's say they are asking for three years experience certificate. And you being a Christian, you being a believer, you being having Jesus as your foundation has only two years of experience certificate. What would we do? The company is asking for three years of experience certificate. We have only two years of experience certificate. Jesus as the foundation. What do we do? When you come out after that interview, whatever, there is a person coming to you, maybe from the church itself. Hey, that is a matter of just 500 rupees. That you can get it. Two years we can easily, yeah, one year break is there, right? We can convert that into three years and that's it. You get the job. And you somehow feel, I think this is Lord's way. I never thought that I will meet this person today. And he almost solved the issue. Most of the believers will go in that direction. Next Sunday they will come and even share a testimony. My God is a great God. Ah, angel came. God is for me. Who can be against me? All this stuff. And they got the job let's say. And the first salary 50% money is brought to the church. To give biryani. Because he wants to ease his conscience. I had only two years but three years certificate I produced. The first salary half of it is for the church. And after eating biryani, most of us is feeling stomach ache. We don't know what is the root of it. Amen. We used very cheap material to build. Amen. Jesus is the foundation. Amen. If you are a person who want to build on Jesus, use expensive material. That will cost you. After coming out of that company, you should be able to say, this job is not for me. I am clear. I don't need a prophet to tell me, but I am sure this is not my job. That's right. Amen. When somebody comes, hey, you can easily make this two into as three years. It's not a big deal. Everybody does it. Everybody does it. In your heart, you should be able to say, demon, get away. Don't look at his face and say, but in your heart you say, this is devil's trick. I don't want this job. Even if I starve, I will not take this job. You are using gold, silver. Amen. Your life will stand on that day. Right. Shelter house people. Amen. The church must stand on that day. Jesus is coming back. Let us use costly materials. The mark of a true church. One is word-centered preaching. Second is Jesus model discipleship. Which will lead us to cross-shaped living. Amen. Corinthian people were at the error. Corinthian people were in huge error. They had Jesus as the foundation. 
they had paul as the pastor apollos as the pastor but they failed to discern because they are infants will infants be able to determine the value of gold and wood they will never be able to determine the infants will determine the value by size spiritual people matured people will not determine the value by size they will determine the value by quality quality Amen. the main error which is happening with the corinthian people is i want you to listen very carefully in first corinthians 4:8 you see something is showing up here of their spiritual life they have jesus as a foundation when they build the superstructure this is what is coming 4:8 can anybody read please 48 ah already you have all you want meaning all your prayer request are answered then you have become rich you have begun to reign meaning you are now people of influence your superstructure is showing wow grand worldly people are looking at your life and saying great after you start going to this church everything is going well with you man all the closed doors are opened and you have become very influential earlier you had a second hand car and now you don't know which car to take because you have two three cars things are going your way you know what paul said in verse 10 4 10 4 we are fools because we are building with what gold silver and costly stones we are fools when we start building our christian life with costly materials world will look at us and say you are a fool let me ask you have anybody looked at your life and said you are a fool by god's grace no pastor that is a mark whether you are on track or not if last week or if last year if your colleague who is sitting with you working in the workplace if they looked at you and said you are a fool you should take this up it's coming to you you just need to play this game you are getting it and you are saying no i am content with this you want to build the superstructure with costly materials the person who is seated next to you is looking fool paul is saying we are fools you are wise look at the irony pastor is fool believer is wise pastor is building with expensive materials believer is building with cheaper material both are claiming we have jesus as the foundation that is the sad state of christianity today not over list is not over then we are weak who the pastor Paul who saw the seed he is weak but what happened to believers you are strong because somewhere you have compromised you are using cheap materials to build you have become strong according to worldly point of view you have become strong third you are honored you are honored and Paul is saying we are dishonored you know how we should um, uh, interpret this verse 410 where is the connection of this three things are said here you are wise you are rich you are honored how we should interpret this verse we should interpret this verse in the light of chapter 1 verse 26 when god called them who were they when god called corinthian people who were they not many of you were wise but now they have become wise not many of you were influential but now they are influential not many of you were of noble birth now they are honored the three things they were not when god called them they have become when they came to jesus and this three things paul is saying these are cheap materials you are using matured believers will understand this today 
gospel is not about change of social status gospel is not about a shift in economic status gospel is about dead people spiritually being alive amen that is another gospel you come to jesus as weak he will make you strong yes he will make you strong but the world will still look at you and say you are weak in the sight of the world people who use costly materials will will be perceived as fools that are the marks the three marks are you remaining as a fool in the sight of the world are you remaining as weak are you remaining as dishonored man let me explain in one word otherwise you will be confused pastor what do you mean by being weak in the sight of the world you know what is the point of being weak in the sight of the world there is an illustration here in chapter 6 a believer is having problem with another believer let's say something about finance thing he is owing him some money some confusion is there what is our immediate thought you have foundation jesus has the foundation you have asked the money back couple of times the next thing is brother if you are not settling this now let's meet in the court let's meet in the court this will be my advocate do you want to take this on i have no problem i am going at with the case you are showing your power do you know what is paul saying use costly materials amen when somebody is cheating you don't take revenge look at chapter 6 verse 7 very difficult 6 7 the very fact that you have lost suits among you means you have been completely defeated even after having jesus as the foundation when you have lost suits among you you are defeated why not rather be why not rather be wronged why not rather be cheated you suffer it if there is anybody here who is contemplating on how to progress with a case or how to file a case let me ask you today refrain from it refrain take a step backwards i am sure there are people like that who is struggling with how to go about i want to teach him a lesson and you may think god is on my side to prove myself to him that is not how god will show his power through us god judges the worldly power god judged how on the cross world thought the power is when he is crucified he should come out of the cross god judges that power he said no that is not how you measure power when you end your suffering you are powerful when nails go through your hands when people cheat you when people betray you when people backbite you if you have jesus as the foundation let the nail pierce your hands remain there you are powerful Amen. you are using costly materials let your prayer change if you are praying lord vindicate me bring me out of this situation you show who your servant is change your prayer lord you show who your servant is give me more grace to endure it it's to start in a family context between husband and wife endure the pain use costly materials don't go ahead with the think thinking of i want to divorce no use costly material you realize the fact god is using this other person to make me more like jesus that is why he has brought this person in my life i am not going to file case against him i am going to endure the pain i am going to carry the cross corinthian people were weak when god called them corinthian people were poor when god called them corinthian people were not of noble birth when god called them but they have become wise they have become strong they have become honored now the one who is writing this when god called him who was he 
he was wise he was strong he was influential but for the sake of this foundation jesus for the sake of that foundation jesus the wise man became fool the strong man became weak the honored man became dishonored this is true christianity god is calling shelter house church today remain as weak people in the sight of the world remain as poor people in the sight of the world pastor what do you mean by poor people in the sight of the world let me tell you i'm not saying you will not earn more than a lakh or anything like that no you may earn maybe 2 lakhs in a month but when you have jesus as the foundation you should have the wisdom how to use that money to construct the superstructure don't keep majority of that income to yourself use costly material maybe take a decision 50% of my income will go to god's work what would the world look at you and say fool number one fool the preacher will go church will go only you will be there if you have money for yourself it will be good for your children that thought comes but on other side god is telling you today remain as a fool use costly materials to build use costly materials to build this is true revival my friends my dear people of god god is calling us today for a deep work not just peripheral things deep work where our life will be challenged and transformed we will become more word centered we will become more jesus focused jesus model discipleship will lead to cross shaped life thirdly lastly what is the mark of a true church word centered preaching will be there jesus model di- discipleship will be there the church will not be becoming powerful in the sight of the world they will remain as fools thirdly lastly if you look at chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 Paul is saying don't you know that no that is a phrase that Paul uses quite often in this letter why is Paul using don't you know that don't you know that because this people have an understanding they know certain things in chapter 8 verse 1 look at chapter 8 verse 1 now about food sacrificed to idols we know that we all possess knowledge Look at chapter 8 verse 1 Corinthian people's error comes from this thing they know many things they have studied god's word and they have paul and apollos as ministers they know knowledge puffs up that is why paul is saying don't you know you are supposed to know this in first corinthians 9 also paul say don't you know in a race everybody run but only one will receive the praise In 1 Corinthians 10:1 don't you know what happened to Israel is a model for you let it not happen to you right. you are supposed to know these things don't you know it Amen. and in chapter 5 also again he says in chapter 5 verse 12 what business is mine to judge those outside the church are you not to judge and 61 if any of you have a dispute with one do you dare take it to the ungodly judgment and verse 2 or do you not know don't you know that you have to judge the world verse 3 don't you know that you, we will judge angels there are many things they know what they know had puffed them up there are many important things they are supposed to know they don't know and what is that third thing mark of a true church don't you know that you are the temple of the living god what is a mark of a true church third mark of a true church true church will be a spirit filled community will be word centered word centered preaching will be there jesus model discipleship will be there spirit filled community don't you know that you are the temple of the living god and it continues if anyone destroys god's temple how can anybody destroy god's temple by throwing stones no there is only one way of destroying god's temple that is by 
creating division in the community of faith. What is the mark of a true church? Where there is oneness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit-filled community, the mark of a spirit-filled community is unity. Not noise, unity. That is why in Ephesians 4, 1 Paul says, maintain the unity in the spirit. Paul is not saying create unity in the spirit. We can never create. Unity is created where? On the cross. On the cross, the barriers are destroyed. What kind of barriers? Ethnic barriers. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile now. There is no difference among us between any ethnicity. No ethnic difference. No economic difference. No rich and poor. Barriers are destroyed. Now what are we supposed to do in a true church? We have to maintain the unity. Not create, maintain. Mark of a true church is where spirit will be hovering upon them and there will be perfect unity. The sad reality is in a church like Corinthian church where they have all spiritual gifts, they had four parties. The church was divided into four groups. It's possible, my dear people of God. We have completing 11 years. Let there be no place for any confusion. Let there be no place for any speculations. Oh, this is why he is singing. This is why I am not getting. No. No speculations, no confusion. Let there be perfect harmony in the house of God. That is the mark of a spiritual community that all will come together in oneness, in one accord. That is the power of the cross to break down barriers and to make us one. And when the, when the spiritual community in chapter 2 verse 9, chapter 2 verse 9, it talks about something very important. For us to have this unity. Chapter 2 verse 9 it says. However it is written. No eye. What, what no eye has seen. No ear has heard. What no human mind has conceived. The things that God has prepared. For those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us. By his spirit. You know what is that meaning of. No eye have seen. No ears have heard. Usually we use this. We use, use this word usually to say. When a marriage proposal come, let's say a marriage proposal has come and this guy, the first marriage proposal guy was earning only 20,000 rupees. He was in a rented house. But that did not work out for some reason and you were very gloomy, sad. After three months, here is another proposal. He has his own house. He has his own business. He has more than a lakh income. This is a word. But no, I have seen. No, but no ear have heard. God has done it. What a misinterpretation of scripture. John, it's very much there. Those are the promised things these days. In Malayalam they say, Manyu in the Raj. Snow, snow falling place. Prophets would say things like that. You know what the spirit would reveal to us when we become a true church? What no eye can see. What no ear can understand. They cannot understand this mystery. The mystery of unity. They cannot see. It is not. No eye has seen. In the sense something was there. No eye has seen. I have seen. No. They cannot see with their human eyes. Spirit has revealed. For us to see. The one who was crucified on the cross. He is my savior. Other eyes cannot see it. Physical eyes would look at cross and say, He is cursed. But when you have spiritual eyes, when you have spirit inside of you, your eyes are open to see, Yes, yes, he is cursed, but he is cursed for me. Amen. What other eyes cannot see, what ear cannot hear, you are able to see and discern because spirit opened your understanding. It's very crucial to have unity. We must allow spirit to do a deep work in us. And the next word, you know, uh, verse 10, the second part, the spirit searches all things. I want you to mark these words. 
the spirit searches all things even the deep things of god in revelation when john is writing to the church in thyatira paul john is talking about deep secrets of satan there are deep secrets of satan that creates disunity in the churches we may think we are getting something which others cannot have access to deep secret of satan is a phrase used for theatera church which created disunity paul is writing to corinthian people we are not having that kind of a secret that creates disunity we have access to secret deep things of god that will help us to maintain unity my dear people of god when we cross over to a new year let us all ask the lord lord we want the deep things of god help us to search all things help us to have understanding over issues circumstances it may so happen that the church may face things which church have never faced in the coming years i pray that all of us will be mature to look at things with spiritual eyes Amen. we will be able to search all things Amen. it's not just once okay in uh, chapter 2 verse 14 look at chapter 2 verse rather 15 215 the person with the spirit makes judgments about that is the thing the person with the spirit searches all things a person with the spirit judges all things his judgment will be different from how a person without the spirit judges things when a person without the spirit judges things it will create disunity when a person who are who is filled with the holy spirit when he searches things when he judges things there will be perfect unity because he is able to see what a carnal eye cannot see how many of us can really pray today lord make us a word centered preaching church can i see your hands we want to grow lord is that our prayer today i want to grow lord yes the seed is sown yes we are getting watering every other day but we want to grow how we can grow by the ministry unadulterated ministry of god's word the word which created a spark in us the same word will grow us into maturity so that we can discern between soulish and spiritual word centered preaching and jesus model discipleship how many of us can pray today sincerely from your heart lord may i never use cheap materials to build my christian life lord help me give me the wisdom to use costly materials may i not become a wise man in the standards of the age the standards of the world may i remain like a fool may i remain like a weak man may you be glorified may cross shaped life be my identity how many of us can truly pray today lord i want more of your spirit i want more of your spirit i want a fresh anointing of the holy spirit that will give me access to the deep things of god that will help me judge all things in the light of the spirit close your eyes my dear people of god everybody close your eyes if you can lift your hands up cry out to the lord lord i want a fresh portion of your holy spirit lord fill me with the holy spirit today so that i can live a victorious christian life all of you would you open your mouth and start speaking to god everybody in the house of god lift your voices and ask the lord lord fill me with a fresh portion of the spirit i don't want to be a failure i don't want to be a defeated christian i want to be an overcoming christian may i grow and bear fruit may i follow jesus and bring glory may i be filled with the holy spirit and be a person who will advocate unity not disunity oh god i pray for shelter house church Thank you for the way that you have brought them thus far. Lord, I pray on this 11th anniversary, the church will be more focused in the coming days on the word than never before. Lord, there is place for the word of God in this church, but in the coming days there will be more focus. All the believers will be grown oh God to a next level. We don't want any of the believers of oh God to be in the state of infancy. 
we want all the believers to grow in the state of maturity lord also we pray that none of us will be deceiving by ourselves to think that we have jesus as the foundation lord after having jesus as the foundation all of us let us build our christian life with costly things oh god draw us oh god near to you as paul said imitate me as i imitate christ let all the members of the shelter house church say imitate us as we imitate jesus christ i pray oh god that you will fill us with a fresh portion of the spirit that we can have access to the deep things of god that we will be able to judge all things in the light of the spirit let your name be glorified to god through the church through all the ministries of the church through the ministry of the word of god through the ministry of discipleship through the ministry of reaching out to people outside let your name be glorified to god let none of us here bring dishonor to thy name let all of us stand for you in this generation as faithful people as servants of god to that end we commit all of us into thy hands in jesus name i ask this prayer amen